remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel at MDN TV Nigeria. Click on the subscribe button and be the first to get notifications. He who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. A man's destiny can be delayed but not denied. And power comes from the Almighty God and he only decides who to entrust it with. These are popular sayings that aptly describe the journey of Prince Shalai Miko to the exalted throne of Wari Kingdom as Ugame Atuashi III. In this report, we will take you through the journey from when he was presented as Olu designate on the 5th of April 2021 to the day of his coronation on the 21st of August 2021. <laughs> Chief Gabriel Awala, the Uwangwe of Wari, performing the coronation of Prince Sholai Miku as Ugame Atuashe III, the 21st Ulu of Wari Kingdom. The journey to the coronation last Saturday, 21st of August 2021, was tasking, difficult, challenging, and almost sabotaged. Following the demise of Ugame Kenwole I, the 20th Ulu of Wari Kingdom in December 2020, and a disagreement within the Olu's Advisory Council under the leadership of Chief Airi Emami, the Lobosheria of Wari Kingdom, over the selection process of an Olu designate, the council, known in the Shakiri language as Ojoye Isan, was reconstituted. Now under the leadership of Chief Johnson Amashun Elege, the Iyashere of Wari Kingdom, the Ojoye Isan formally presented Prince Sholai Miku to the Shakiri National Assembly as the Olu designate otherwise known as Omoba. As tradition demands, his first duty as a new designate was to perform the Iken rites, which is the process of moving the remains of Ogyame Ikenwale to the royal burial ground in Ijala for interment. Next was Idanike, the traditional rites of seclusion for three lunar months, preparatory to ascending the throne. While in Idanike, he received tutelage on the history customs and traditions of the Shekris, as well as national politics, global issues, diplomacy, as well as the conduct and courage of an Ulu of Wari Kingdom. Before last Saturday's coronation, there were several attempts to sabotage the coronation. First, the 400-year-old crown used for the coronation of an Ulu of Wari was stolen from the palace. Also, Chief Airi Emami and Prince Oyowale Miko, in two separate legal suits, also tried to stop the coronation. They, however, failed to secure injunctions to stop the coronation process. Sensing his inability to stop the coronation through the courts, Prince Oyewale resorted to self-help by declaring himself as Olu designate awaiting coronation. However, when the Nigerian police released documents officially declaring him wanted, he fled into hiding. The obvious failure of Prince Sholai Miko's detractors to stop the coronation eventually gave way to frustration. Less than 48 hours before the coronation, inside the Niger Delta cameras caught disgruntled youths in worry, destroying posters and decorations announcing the coronation ceremony. In spite of everything, the coronation was definitely going to go on as planned. Friday, 20th of August 2021, eve of the coronation, Prince Shola Miku joined youths and other chiefs to walk the streets of worry in a match for peace parade. Later that same day, a praise and worship service was held at the Delta Boatyard in Wally. Saturday, 21st August 2021, D-Day. At exactly 12 midnight, fireworks greeted the skies of Odei Shekiri to announce that the day of coronation is finally here. At 9 a.m., a boat regatta on the Wari River signaled the commencement of coronation festivities. And this is an identity of the Chakiri people when we are into a celebration of such magnitude. That's why you see the boat regatta. The convoy of boats led by the royal boat conveying Prince Sholai Emiko led the way from Wari to Odei Shakiri, the ancestral home of the Shakiris and venue for the coronation ceremony. Upon arrival in Odei Shekiri, Prince Sholai Miku was received by thousands of Iwere sons and daughters. Prince Sholai Miku had to perform three symbolic tasks before coronation, which he will never again perform for the rest of his life. First, he had to fetch water from a clay pot. 
split wood with an axe, then paddle a canoe. After he took the oath of office and picked one of the swords used by former kings to define the name he will adopt for his reign, Prince Shola Emiko proceeded to the venue for coronation proper. He was crowned by Chief Gabriel Awala with a brand new golden crown. While Chief Johnson and Marshal Nelege formally announced the name that he will adopt for his reign. The title of our 21st Olu of Wari Kingdom. His title is Atu Washe the Third. In what looked like a definition of what will guide his reign, Ogame Atuashe the Third broke into gospel songs of surrender to the Almighty before making his speech. Rain, Jesus, rain. Rain, Jesus, rain. While thanking everyone for their support, Ogame Atuashe III reversed a generational curse placed on Nigeria by his grandfather, Rejua II, who claimed that he was offended by the Nigerian government. In its place, I release forgiveness and healing to the federal government of Nigeria whose might was used to propagate that offense. And I decree unprecedented and uncommon peace, prosperity, progress, development upon this land. I bring down the government of heaven onto this land and I direct it to flow as a force that can neither be sabotaged, slowed, nor stopped. He also spoke to the youths in the Niger Delta. We have heard the narrative several times as to how the Niger Delta is, in term, is blessed in terms of resources. The truth, however, we must look beyond oil and gas and channel our energy in the right direction towards endeavors that will result in added value across the board. He promised that his reign will usher in peace and prosperity, not just for his Shakiri people and the Wari kingdom alone, but for their neighbors. He gave special honor to his mother and his wife while saying that women will no longer be invisible under his reign. President Muhammad Buhari, who was represented by the Deputy President of Senate, Senator Ovi Agege, expressed confidence that the reign of Ogami Atua III will usher in peace and progress to the Shakiri nation. As a well-educated and successful entrepreneur with considerable national and international work experience, Your Royal Highness is blessed with the wisdom and vision to look back and fully embrace centuries old practices even as you look forward to the modern future with the persevere of this generation i am certain that as a monarch with the traditional will to continue the noble 500 year tradition of this kingdom your reign will witness improved peace progress and development of your people and the nation while welcoming the worry monarch to the fold of first-class monarchs in the country, the only of Ife, Oba Adeyeye Ogunwusi, or Jaja II, called on Ogyame Atuashe III to embrace all of his people, including the good, the bad, and the ugly, as a father will do. Make sure that your leadership is a fatherly leadership. And I want to thank all the chiefs of the entire Wari Kingdom for their support, for their dedication, and to uphold the heritage of the entire Wari people. The Obar of Benin, Omanoba Nedu Ukuakpolopolo, Oba Ewari II, who sent representatives to the ceremony, also prayed for the new Olu. Omanoba says, You are going to live long. Atuwa said the third. Omanoba says, Your tenor, your reign, shall be peaceful. Our Manoba says, yes, the Czechists have had Olus, but this Olu we have now we did be, will be the best. Hey, While several traditional rulers from across the country grace the occasion, it is indeed curious and thought-provoking that not a single traditional ruler from Delta State was present at the occasion, except for the Deni of Agbo, who sent in 
representatives. The governor of Kirby State, Atiku Bagudu, as well as representatives of Delta and Edo State governors were also present at the occasion. Well-wishers who traveled from far and wide to commemorate with the new King of Wari Kingdom were full of admiration and expectations from his reign. He has been well prepared for the, for the job. This is a new dawn of possibilities and I believe unity. Uh, I feel very, very happy and I feel very proud to be an Ishakuri. You listen to his speech, his acceptance speech, and uh, it was amazing, you know, how he conceptualized, you know, and uh, articulated all the problems and uh, the issues that have been bedeviling the kingdom uh, over the years and uh, what he postulated, you know, towards uh, solving them. It's not an easy time, but God will see him through. The ancestors will see him through. And if God gives me the strength to continue, I will be there to see that he continues the, to mount and to rule like our forefathers, our ancestors. Oh, oh, I'm excited to be here and you can see everywhere is peaceful, colorful, see culture at its best. So I'm happy and excited. We pray that his kingdom continue to, to reign and may he reign in good health and with long life. The Chikris are highly focused, organized people, organized and united people. So as a government, we would not expect anything less than this from them. However, it, however beyond today's coronation, there's need for the Chikris to work together, work together and serve His Royal Majesty faithfully, loyally and honestly. After surmounting several legal, cultural and traditional hurdles, the 21st Olu of Wari Kingdom, Ogame Atuashi III, through his first kingly proclamations, known as Afomasin, has given hope of a new dawn to Wari Kingdom. The smiles of Iwere sons and daughters is proof that indeed a righteous king has come. And when the righteous is in power, as the good book says, the people rejoice. Inside the Niger Delta, 